we continue our week of post-trade deadline coverage by talking about the Arizona Coyotes rebuild. And today we are focusing on the future of the Arizona Coyotes. Who are these rising stars that we're all going to be paying attention to in the years to come? All in today's episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of the Locked on Coyotes podcast, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook partner of the Locked on Podcast Network. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlock. We got a great show because we're talking rising stars, Carl, and nothing can get me more excited than talking about the future stars of the Arizona Coyotes. We talked about cornerstone pieces you know pieces you're going to build around but these are the guys that are coming up and coming up fast yeah uh one of the things we talked about last season was just watch dylan gunther highlights when the the going gets tough uh so yeah there is definitely a big aspect of a rebuild it's just looking to the future for the highlights uh because and We're these days, you can watch more than just Dylan Gunther highlights. There were so many people, so many other players' highlights. You can watch. Heck, there were some players who don't even need to watch highlights because they're actually part of the Coyotes already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The The Coyotes have a few interesting pieces, a few younger guys that were not necessarily prepared for. I think even last season when we were talking about, uh, let's start with one. J.J. Mosier is a rising star on the Coyotes' defense. I'm not sure what his ceiling is. He was a good pickup last season, but he has been really good this season as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, not very many people probably would have, you know, had his name up on that list. You know, he was drafted as an overager in 2021. And, you know, I think people might have been like, okay, you know, maybe he was an overager, so who knows what kind of, you know, play we're going to get out of him because, yeah, you know, you expect to draft the younger people because, you know, if they were good enough to get drafted straight out of the gate out of 18 um, or 17 for some. Um, I, I will say, though, that drafting an overager in the COVID years makes all the sense in the world because yeah. a lot of the younger players just lost that year of experience. So 100%. There, it makes there sense. Was a, yeah. Yeah. And, and it makes, yes. If like, if you look at it in the, in like that scheme, it's like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. But in the general sense, like it was, it really the right decision for the coyotes. Of course it was. Yeah. Um, you, you ended up getting a guy like JJ Mosier who has looked phenomenal. And I talked about JJ Mosier on the episode of locked on NHL with Gil Martin. You know, we talked about the trade de trade deadline uh, before the deadline happened, and he asked me who's one player to watch out for, and the first player that came to mind of a player that you needed to watch out for was J.J. Mosier. Nice. Yeah, he is a, a good player. He, had, he played a, a good role last season. He has only improved this season. Uh, he's already set career highs in goals, assists, and points. Um playing more games of course but uh just overall he is really impressed uh and it, it must be said two points in his last four games uh at least we're recording this during the coyotes blues game so could be three in the last four could be four in the last four we don't know yeah and he's he just looks um like he, he just like look, looks like he fits in pretty well and he and i'm it's good that something like that happens pretty fast, right? Um, we're in a weird year, and I know we're going to talk about, you know, have an entire episode dedicated to defensemen, but we're in a weird situation where, where you know, like there's not very many defensemen we can look forward to. J.J. Mosier is, though, one of those that's like, okay, he's going to be a piece, you know, a few years down the line that's really going to be important for the Arizona Coyotes defense. Yeah. 
like I said before, we don't know what his ceiling is going to be. So I'm not sure he's going to be a top line guy. He doesn't necessarily have to be. Yeah, he doesn't. He could be a good, like, you know, second line uh, or second pairing defenseman, like just kind of playing a key role. Like we talked about core pieces, including Christian Fisher. Like a couple of years from now, we can be saying JJ Mosier is like that core for the defense. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm like, it's, it's kind of, it, it is kind of interesting. So we're talking about a guy who was drafted in the second round too. Right. And yeah. not to say second rounders aren't going to be that, you know, turn out to be those kind of players. Heck, they're still drafted in, you know, the first half of the draft. Heck, even seventh rounders can come up to be NHL stars. But, you know. What was the handle a fifth round player, I think? Yes. Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds right to me. Yeah. So, like, you can, you could really, like, hit anywhere it all kind of depends on what your what your drive is after the draft and i think jj Mosher kind of showed what he could do right away like and that is one of the benefits of getting an old an overager like they're physically ready to go they just have a chance to prove themselves with the coyotes and jj Mosher proved himself absolutely you know there are some other players currently with the arizona coyotes too that i want to focus on um and i really want to hit this one because we're you know you know still at right at the beginning of the show and i feel like everyone wants and like a lot of people want to talk about him and i want to talk about him i know you want to talk about him and that's matthias michelli oh absolutely michelli has been phenomenal like i i don't i feel like we slept on him a little bit uh, and I'm going to blame you because you're the Roadrunners person. Look, I it's 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 interesting because Michelli looked great when he was with Tucson and that year, the last year I covered the, uh, the Tucson Roadrunners. And I was like, you know what? I think he's going to be good. I don't know at what point he's going to be an NHLer, but he's looks yeah. good. I'm glad he's there. Um, he really surprised me. At how well he's playing at the NHL level. Um, and he's just, and he continues to get better. There's, and maybe it could be something to be said about the Arizona Coyotes development coaches because there are, se- there are some players who just really develop well and come out to be those kind of players. Matias Michelli yeah. is a perfect example of that. I mean, just, just kind of looking at the history of the Coyotes from when. I first started following them to to now. They have incrementally improved in their development process like every year. Uh, I think like moving the, the AHL affiliate to Tucson definitely did wonders. But, you know, I, I was also kind of used to being like, oh, he's a good AHL player. Maybe he's not going to be a productive NHL player. Maybe he's just going to be like a fourth line guy. Cause it seemed like that's where the coyotes were at with their AHL guys. But Michelli has stepped up. He is, I think third in rookie points, despite missing a pretty significant chunk of games uh, gets no respect. Uh, I need yeah. to write an article about it. Um, but yeah, Michelli is definitely a rising star for the coyotes. The NHL put a graphic over the weekend about you know which NHL players or uh, which NHL rookie is on track to win the Calder Trophy this year. Matthias Michelli's name wasn't even mentioned, like yeah. even on like also receiving votes. And I'm I mean, like, he, I think he received like four points. He was like sixth in voting. Like you had to scroll to the very bottom to see. He but but not nearly enough respect. Like. And I get you take your top two guys and you throw in the goalie because sure, like how are you going to judge a a rookie goalie versus a rookie forward? Uh, The joys of being a Calder voter. But like the fact that like you're looking at just points overall and not points per game just kind of irritates me. Look at points per game and you also follow the eye test. Yeah. Right. 
it's a huge part of hockey. And I know some people might going to go go deep into analytics. I'm a huge fan of the eye test. I look at just watch you just watch Michelli play, and he's comfortable out there. He and this the thing is how young he is. He truly is a rising star. Yeah, and it also should be mentioned that he is not like benefiting from playing on a, the same line as Clayton Keller. He is playing with Lawson Kraus most of the time, who is a great player. But last season, one of the concerns we had was like. You know, Kraus spent a lot of time with Phil Kessel. Like, Kessel wasn't scoring as many goals, but he was, like, setting Kraus up. Is he going to still thrive? Michelli kind of slid into the role of a Phil Kessel on that line, which is not something I thought I would be saying. That is not an easy role to fill. <laughs> yeah. And he has 27 points right now, or 27 assists right now, five goals. Like, he is just a solid playmaker. Yeah. And I am really like, you know, excited to be talking about him. And I'm like, I'm urging some of my, some of our locked on colleagues and other NHL like coverage colleagues to actually pay attention to this kid a little bit more. Like, you know, don't write him off because he's a member of the Arizona Coyotes. And I know some people are probably doing that, but like really, if you really take a look at what he's doing, he like, I am extremely excited that this guy is a member of the Arizona Coyotes and is at his young age. Yeah. Like I get it. It it is tough to like keep track of who on the Coyotes is doing good. You're not watching their games, but there is a phenomenal rookie career or rookie year happening right now. And people should be paying attention to it. Absolutely. We still got more rising stars to talk about on this episode of Locked On Coyotes as we as we go through a rebuild week of discussions of this show. We're going to get to all that and more just a little in a quick second. But first, I'm going to take a quick word from our sponsors on the show. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers get a no sweat for a bet up to $1,000. That bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. You, know, you can keep going more and more and more. Like it's It's got everything. I am always looking at uh, bets to make, whether it's in the NBA or the MLB um, here in Arizona. I'm always doing the MLB spring trainings here. Um, Plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payout with same game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So let's continue this episode talking about rising stars And I want to, Carl, spend this second bit talking about um, those in the pipeline that we haven't seen yet. I know we there's some other roster players we want to get to, um, but I really want to focus on some of the some of the uh, those prospects because these guys are guys are going to we're going to see really soon. Dylan Gunther is an example. Um, He got a chance to play a decent amount with the Coyotes already, so that kind of is a hybrid. But he's still considered a prospect because he's right now still back in the WHL. And uh, we got a chance to see a good amount of him. And oh my God, like a few years down the road, this kid's going to be extremely phenomenal. He already is. Yeah. Like he he didn't come in and have like the offensive season that we were potentially hoping for. Like he didn't have Clinton Kelly's rookie year, but he had a solid outing. Uh, he looked much better after the World Juniors. Like it seemed like confidence was something that he was kind of needing, um, and he got that eventually. And we could only hope that he's going to just continue to improve and look better next year with like more physical development. He's on a really good Seattle Thunderbirds team right now, so like there's nothing really like you know you can only be happy for him that he's getting you know playing some meaningful hockey. Um, yeah. As we talked, as we talked, you know, when, you know, he first got sent down, 
and not to mention you know you saw how he played at the uh the world junior championship uh, over the holidays phenomenal he just like he looks like an nhl level player but right now but, but you know at his entry level cost and currently playing in the junior level <laughs> yeah uh i think that our evaluation of him throughout the season was like conservative it was this is how hockey players are normally developing this is what we should expect for him and he exceeded our expectations at every level i i I don't think that we were like lowering our expectations for him like he just was that good at a young age he didn't click nap like this year but you have to imagine he's going to click next year Oh, 100%. Um, you have to imagine he's going to click next year. Um, especially, too, with, and as you mentioned, how he exceeded a lot of those expectations. You and I were skeptical of whether or not he was going to make the final roster. Like, I was kind of, you know, I, I, I did mention, it's like, hey, you know what? Maybe just give him just the nine games. See yeah. what happens. Um, and he we just. We were skeptical looked- he's going to make the final roster, the nine games, and like, I think we may have even discussed like sending him back right after juniors. I'm not sure. Um, I think we ha- we were having that dis- we were having a discussion of I believe when Schmaltz was coming back from injury because he was out with yeah. injury at the beginning of the season. And I think like maybe that's the reason why Gunther is still up because he's kind of filling a you know filling you know a role that someone else is filling Schmaltz spot and Gunther is in to kind of you know fill the void that of the next step of the next man up. Um, and he exceeded those expectations. He's like, okay, um, Schmaltz is back. Gunther is still playing well, so we can't just send them down. There's no point in doing that at this point. Yeah. Uh, and then it was kind of, we got to the point where we're like, eh, contract reasons. Uh, we all had to break out our cap friendly page and look at the provisions of burning a year towards your ufa status um which is always fun to do uh like legit a favorite thing of mine is to just be like what are the interesting cap implications of this move absolutely so gunther 100 percent a rising star for the arizona coyotes a player to to really pay attention to um as they navigate this rebuild another one we talked about watching highlights of prospects carl if there's a prospect, it's like we talked, we, we said there's num- a number of prospects. You can watch so many prospects to watch highlights to kind of on, on these down p- parts of the season to kind of get your hopes up. But if there's one player to watch out for, it's Logan Cooley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Logan Cooley was the go to for me just watching something ridiculous hockey happen. Uh, in 31 games with the University of Minnesota, Cooley has 16 goals and 32 assists. Just a phenomenal freshman year. Uh, I, I looked it up. Cooley has more points his freshman year than Clayton Keller did. And Keller was also on a stacked Boston call, or Boston University. Uh, oh. A higher education institute in Boston, like a very good team. Uh, so, like, you know, the University of Minnesota team is great. Cooley's line is great, but he is producing exceptionally well. Yeah. Also, it was Boston University. Um, <laughs> just had to double check there. Um, but I mean, the University of Minnesota still has some phenomenal NHL talent right now. You know, yeah. I mean. Heck- Logan Cooley is playing alongside um, Toronto Maple Leafs prospect and Scottsdale native Matthew Nice. Um, yeah. So, like, that's just like you know another another example of what what makes that team so good. But even then, I can't believe Nice is in the uh, Hobie Baker conversation and Cooley is not. Uh, that just seems weird to me. Yeah, it's. There, there's a lot of aspects that ha- that go into the Hobie Baker conversation. I don't know exactly. I, I, I can't tell you exactly, but it's, it's interesting. It really is. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let's be fair. We don't cover enough college hockey to be able to speak authoritatively on that. But I, I saw that. And I was like, why is Cooley not on this show? Right. This. I do He's think the though... phenomenal season. I watched the highlights. I, I do think we should take a look more into the um in into college hockey because of you know well yeah you have uh you have what the you know the Minnesota you know, University of Minnesota and Logan Cooley up there, you know. Heck, right here in our own backyard, we got Arizona State University, um, you know, with another Coyotes prospect and and Josh Doan. Um yeah. You got people all over the place. Um, college hockey is a great place, and I think it's becoming a lot more important now um, than it ever has in you know the previous years of being an NHL um, media person or NHL like fan or just a hockey fan in general. Yeah, as someone who has done a lot of like prospect reviews, plus prospect kind of recaps, talking about seasons. The NCAA is more important now than I think at any time. Like, and part of that is something we've talked about a lot. The United States National Development Program is really good now and it is feeding player college hockey and it is creating just some fantastic things that we need to be paying attention to. But there's just so much hockey uh, and so much prospects. It's it's tough to keep track of it all. I mean, what in the twenty was it the twenty one draft that had like so many players in the in the top ten picks from the University of Michigan. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and hockey NH or NCAA hockey is just really good, and there is the traditional schools like Michigan, uh, Boston, Minnesota, like the hockey places. But the fact that ASU is becoming like a good school, like we are seeing growth in that. Like hopefully in the next couple of years, we can get like really good California college hockey. That'd be fun. Uh, that would be a good rivalry. If we can form like a Pac-12 like conference, in the NCAA for hockey, you know, get the U of A in there, get the LA schools in there. Uh, yeah. and, and honestly, like everything we've discussed about hockey in Tucson, I would not be surprised if U of A gets a program in the next like four years. It's it, it's that that's hopeful. I mean, as a U of A alumni, I'm always hoping for something like that. But, you know, that's that's, you know, for another conversation, we do have to continue talking about rising stars for the Arizona Coyotes. We'll finish that conversation on the other side of this break. Are you looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a built bar. We've got through the holidays and I know my goal get a little bit healthier this year. And if you're like me, you want to eat healthier, but you don't want to compromise taste, then man, you just got to try this thing. And that is Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think that they're good for you. They're perfect for your New Year's resolution. And what makes Built Bars so good is that they're covered in 100% real chocolate, they are only 130 calories. They have just four grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And you don't have to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your built bars at built.com, but now you can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. You could head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of built bars. So now let's go ahead and finish off this conversation, Carl, talking about rising stars for the Arizona Coyotes. Um, and I want to shift back to some roster players and some, and some other up and coming players, maybe some players in the AHL. Um, there's one player definitely, I definitely want to touch on, um, kind of shifting back to the blue line. Uh, we talked about JJ Mosier as an example, someone who was, dra um, who was drafted, but we can talk about now someone who's picked off of the waiver wires, uh, who kind of we didn't really expect. Um, too much, but has looked phenomenal. And you saw Valimaki. 
absolutely. Valimaki has impressed. He is surprised in the best possible way. Like you said, he was a waiver pickup. Uh, I know that Calgary fans were were really upset to uh, to see him go. A uh, friend of the show, Mike Gould, uh, was very pissed when he was put on waivers and immediately knew that the Coyotes were going to claim him. And he has looked good. He has kept pace with J.J. Moser, who we also talked about as a rising star. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's nice. And I know... Like I said, like I know I mentioned it. We're going to talk about de- defense, you know, defense as a whole, you know, later on this week. But you know, we just named two rising star defensemen. Um, those are, the, you know, are those guys going to be the absolute top defensemen? You know, those, you know, you know, you know shatter breaker, you know, like you know, ground breakers or anything. No, but they look great. They fit in, and they they're doing their job you know, as what they, uh, uh, as NHL defensemen and they're and, you know, pretty good at it too. You know? Yeah. They're, they're defending fairly well. Um, they're also generating offense. It is a very kind of interesting role for a defenseman. Um, and now that Shane Goss is fair and Jacob Chikrin have been traded, there's going to be like major opportunities for both players. We've talked about, you know, opportunities and stuff like that. And I'm glad that those two players have that opportunity now, even more so. It's it's, it's completely magnified for those two players of really getting the opportunity to prove that they are indeed rising stars. Because Mosier and Dylan Mackey, um, you know, could, you know, ride the coattails of Chick Ran Gotha's for a little bit longer, you know, because, you know, maybe they get set up in a certain perfect way because of those two players. Both of them are gone. Yeah. There is no excuse anymore of how of whether or not they're playing well. If they're playing, continuing to play well, but it's because they're well. They're playing well. And, and I will also say, I I believe they played a a significant amount of their season together. So that could be like just an interesting pairing for the next couple of years. Like if they develop a good chemistry with each other, like why not? Um, I I I think they're split up currently just because the. The blue line is so thin, but yeah, in terms of like players who you expect to be significant contributors in the Coyotes blue line next season, uh, Valimaki and Mosier are your two. Yeah. And, and I, I, they can, they're definitely the defensemen that I can trust to hold down the fort through these rebuild years, right? They're going to be, you know, do enough of a job for the Coyotes to kind of get through. And like I said, they're not going to be those groundbreakers. They're not going to be the kind of that I'm going to be like, you know what? You know, when this team is emerging for the playoff run, like I want both of them on my top pair. Like I'm like, it's, I, it's, it would make a really big argument to say that, but that doesn't, that's not necessarily say a bad thing because they're still doing the kind of job that they're supposed to do. Yeah. They, they are performing well. Um, I, I think we are still a ways off from determining what their season or their, their ceiling is going to be. But next couple of years, uh, I, I can picture both of them being just reliable like defensemen. Like that could be, if not the top pair, like maybe your second pairing. Like if, if, if and Mosier keep up their production and just slay, lay flat and they're like the third pairing, that'd be insane for the Coyotes. Uh, well, absolutely. And I'm, uh, and it's, it's, it's nice to see that, you know, we have, we have that right now with the Coyotes and, you know, it's good to have two rising star defensemen out there. Um, at least, we're, at least they're not completely alone. That said, any other players out there that you want to touch on who you consider a rising star? Uh, yep, uh, I would feel remiss if I didn't mention him. Uh, not a player that we see too much, but Artem Duda has just been playing extremely well. Um, as a North American-centered person, it is difficult for me to follow the AHL, the Russian leagues, um, just because really needs to be your full-time job to be watching prospects at that level. But he was playing games in the top league in the KHL. That is a major step. That is playing in the top league in his country. You have to respect that. 
I think he is probably the Coyotes' best chance for a top pairing defenseman. Um, like I said, I haven't had a chance to watch too much footage of him, so I can't speak too much, but his name needs to be in the conversation. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I think years down the road, and, you know, it's only so much that we can say, given, like I said, our limited scope of, you know, uh, um, European hockey. But I, I, I believe, I, 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 I have reason to believe that years down the road, people are going to look at Artem Duda and, and it's going to wonder, you know, how the Coyotes were able to get, get him, you know, as late as they did, even though it wasn't that late, but still as yeah. late as they did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is the dream. And for right now, uh, that's kind of where the evidence is pointing us. And maybe they might look at it and be like, okay, maybe some of us were, you know, a little bit tough on our decisions to not, to kind of like shy away from Russian players for a reason, because, you know, what's going on right now in Eastern Europe. But, like, you know, these athletes, you kind of have, like, if you separate them from what's going on over there, like, I mean, there's always been a hesitation with Russian players and whether or not they'd be willing to come over from the KHL. Um, the fact that there's a current war happening has exacerbated those concerns. Uh, I, d I don't know, but like, there's also the fact that, you know, we discussed it earlier. COVID had a major impact on the development of players. So JJ Mosher was like a smarter pick as a overager, like, we are living in interesting times and it is making hockey drafting hard, which is like the most ridiculous complaint, but it is the one that kind of most affects kind of what we're doing right now. Absolutely. So Artem Duda at hundred percent um, should be lumped in as a, as a rising star. Um, if you're able to pay attention to European hockey, good on you. Cause I feel like it's, it'd be a really exciting, um, exciting thing to watch. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyways, though, we are just about out of time for this episode of Locked on Coyotes. Throughout this week, we're going to continue to talk about the rebuild that they're going through and players that we think are going to be major parts of this um, of this team throughout the rebuild. Coming up, we're going to talk about defensemen, of course. We're also going to talk about major support pieces for, for this team. Be sure, be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to Locked on Coyotes if you have yet to already. If you liked this episode, don't forget to leave a review, to like, to leave a comment. We really appreciate all the uh, interaction that we get from all you guys. And they also interact with us on social media because we're on Facebook, facebook.com slash locked on coyotes, and on Instagram at locked on coyotes. And of course, also on Twitter at L O underscore coyotes. I'm personally at Robin underscore Lionel. Carl Pavlock is at five for howling. Interact with us, ask a question you might have, we might answer right back, or in a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I hope you guys are staying healthy, and don't forget to howl on. <laughs>